Assassination is a term that is very common to cartels due to their continuous territorial wars. Cartel members are trained and properly armed to take down their rivals at every chance they get, but there's always a small sect of people regarded as the cartel's assassins. In today's video, we're talking about one such deadly assassin known to be a member of the Gulf Cartel. But before we dive into La Flaca, let's take a look at the Gulf Cartel and its operations. Stay till the end of this video to learn more about the curse of La Flaca. Gulf Cartel The Gulf Cartel, or CDG, is one of the oldest crime groups formed in Mexico. Its origin dates back to the 1930s, and it was founded by Juan Nepomuquero Guerra. The cartel started its business by smuggling large quantities of alcohol and heroin into the United States during the Prohibition era. As soon as the Prohibition era ended, the crime syndicate dove right into gambling houses, prostitution rings, car theft, and smuggling of illegal items. The group experienced significant growth in the 1970s when Juan Garcia Abrego took over leadership. In the 1980s, Abrego added the trafficking of cocaine, methamphetamines, and marijuana into the cartel's operations. They further diversified into protection racketeering, extortion, assassination, and kidnapping. Today, the Gulf Cartel is still in existence, although other smaller cartels have broken out, while the ones remaining are in factions. The cartel is currently based in Matamoros, Tamaulipas. Directly across the U.S. border from Brownsville, Texas, they have an international network and dealings with other crime groups in Asia, Central America, the United States, and Europe. The small groups that have broken out of the Gulf Cartel are continuously at each other's throats, fighting for territories and trafficking routes. The war led to the higher and ultimately the death of Jocelyn Alejandra Nino, aka La Flaca. Jocelyn Alejandra Nino was allegedly an assassin working for the Gulf Cartel based in Tamaulipas. Her nickname, La Flaca, translates to the skinny one in English. Jocelyn had a slim body, and this led to her getting the nickname, but the name also stands as a reference to Our Lady of Holy Death, a female skeleton-like saint that is revered by many Mexicans. The skeleton-like saint is commonly revered by drug traffickers and cartels. Girls like Jocelyn are often recruited by cartels to function as watchmen or prostitutes, but after a while, they learn to climb their way up to foot soldier ranks and even higher. They use their girly and harmless looks as a way to ward off suspicion from law enforcement agents as well as rival cartel members while wreaking havoc everywhere. As is the norm, cartel members always hide their identities from social media to avoid being caught by law enforcement. However, Jocelyn Nino became a famous name on social media on January 5, 2015, after an unknown person posted a picture of her on Valor por Tamaulipas, a journalist page that posts about organized crime stories and security updates. Within a short while, her pictures got to Facebook and Twitter. The pictures were shared more than 40 times and had over 1,500 likes on Facebook. With her picture in circulation, it didn't take much time for people to identify her as a Gulf Cartel hit woman based in Rio Bravo. In the picture, Jocelyn has a wide smile on her face, a firearm around her neck, and a bulletproof vest. She's wearing a golden necklace and has her sunglasses on her head. The background of the picture got everyone talking about how cartel employees live a low-income lifestyle, as opposed to the general belief that people working for cartels live luxuriously in Mexico. Investigators believe the pictures were most likely leaked by a member of Los Metros, a rival faction of the Gulf Cartel. The faction has been at war with another Gulf Cartel faction known as Los Ciclones, the one Jocelyn reportedly belongs to. The war between the two factions had started in January 2015, and investigators suspect the pictures were leaked as a way to weaken Los Ciclones. During the first few months of 2015, numerous pictures of the rival gang members were leaked on social media to attract the attention of security forces and rival gang members. At the time, Los Ciclones were being led by Angel Eduardo Parade Prado Rodriguez, also known as Ciclone 7 while Los Metros leaders were Jose Hugo Rodriguez Sanchez, a.k.a. El Gafe, Juan Manuel Luisa Salinas, a.k.a. Comandante Toro, and Juan Francisco Carizales, a.k.a. Metro 98. Jocelyn's duty as Ciclone 7 member was to fight off Los Metros, stopping them from doing as they pleased in Rio Bravo and Reynosa. Rio Bravo was formerly controlled by Los Metros, hence any member of Los Ciclones coming into that area was at risk of death or harm. A few days after she was identified on social media, Jocelyn and two other Los Ciclones members were kidnapped and the major suspects were Los Metros members. On the 13th of April, 2015, 
Jocelyn Nino's body was found inside an ice cooler by Mexican authorities. Her body was found alongside that of the other two Los Ciclones members who were kidnapped with her. Their bodies were dismembered and packaged inside plastic bags in three different coolers that were dumped at a Soriana parking lot. When investigators took closer looks at the bodies, they found that the victims were likely tortured for information before they were each killed by a gunshot to the head. Figuring out the identity of the dismembered bodies, especially that of cartel members, may have been an impossible task, but Jocelyn's body was easily identified because she had a visible tattoo with the word Nino on her forearm, which was seen on the picture of her that had been posted earlier. In the coolers where the bodies were dumped, investigators also found a threatening message to Los Ciclones. The message read, This will happen to all the filthy who support Los Ciclones. Keep sending these fucking assholes. The message also included criticism of Los Ciclones for using female foot soldiers in their battle, and they were told to expect more deaths. The message was signed by a member of Los Metros, whose nickname is 65. Los Metros took their victory over Los Ciclones to Twitter when they posted the dismembered bodies of the cartel's members. The first picture shows Jocelyn beaten to a pulp on the ground with the other two members. The second picture shows their dismembered bodies inside the cooler. Los Metros pasted the pictures to further warn Los Ciclones, making sure that they understood their level of brutality and what to expect if members of Los Ciclones kept challenging them. The Curse of La Flaca Unfortunately, the death of Jocelyn is the worst among three others who have been nicknamed La Flaca. These three women were hit women or popularly called Sicarias. They all worked for different cartels before the Curse of La Flaca caught up with them. Every one of them was met with horrible luck in their time as Sicarias. The first person to have been called La Flaca was Veronica Mireya Moreni Carrion of San Nicolas de los Garza. Before joining the Los Zetas cartel, Veronica was a police officer who was decorated after being injured in a shootout with kidnappers in 2009. Leaving the force to join cartels is a common happening in Mexico, and the government is yet to understand the reason behind it. Veronica worked as a hitwoman for the cartel until 2011, when she was arrested by Mexican Marines. At the time of her arrest, she was reportedly driving a stolen car. She had six cell phones and a revolver in the car. After being apprehended, Veronica was charged with numerous murders and drug trafficking. In the same year, another cartel's hitwoman nicknamed La Flaca was arrested by Mexican authorities. Nancy Manriquez Quintanar was allegedly involved in at least a dozen murders. She was also known to troll night spots for rival cartel members. Shortly after her arrest, Nancy was charged and put behind bars. These two hit women were serving their time when Jocelyn Nino took up the nickname La Flaca. Sadly, her fate turned out to be worse than that of her supposed predecessor. From the picture that made her famous, many people suspected she would be in her late teens or early 20s before she was killed. One can't help but wonder how many young people are being hired by cartels to do their dirty jobs. How many of them have been killed in gang wars and how many more will die in the coming years? As long as cartels exist in Mexico, there will be more and more people willing to take up the position of assassins and even the moniker La Flaca. And that's all on our video today. Let us know what you think about teenage foot soldiers in the comments section. Do like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.